June 29th. That was the release date of Playtest Packet 6 for 1D&D, or 5th edition, 2nd edition, or 5.5, or just 5th edition, whatever we're going to call this playtest. It was the biggest Unearthed Arcana yet, and had revised versions of the Expert and Priest classes, as well as our first look at the playtest Monk. And let's just say, reception has been... In many optimization circles, the Monk has been regarded as the weakest of D&D's core classes for a while. And given what we got in the playtest packet, things are not getting any better. Hi, I'm John, this is Incendium RPGs, and today we are talking about what to do with the monk. Let's get into it. All right, time for the subscriber roll off. We're gonna roll contested checks, if my score meets or beats yours, then congratulations, you're a new subscriber to the channel. And just make sure to hit that notification bell. All right, here we go. A nine. All right, so if you got lower than a nine, welcome to the channel. Before we get started, big disclaimer. My suggestion today may be a bit of a hot take. I'm expecting some interesting comments, so make sure just keep it civil in the comment section, okay? So the monk. We first have to understand why monk is regarded as one of the weaker, if not the weakest class in the game. I definitely think it's the weakest class in the game. There are plenty of other YouTubers that have gotten into the nitty gritty math of why monk is so weak, you can search them out on your own. I highly recommend checking out their videos. I'm just going to summarize the key <laughs> points below. First, Monk is a melee class that lacks survivability. It has a smaller hit die than any of its other melee focused peers. The specifics of its unarmored defense prevent it from using armor meaning that it is dependent on its ability score progression, and you really can't prioritize your constitution without heavily sacrificing your armor class. Second, the monk has low damage output. Even Jeremy Crawford in his interview with Todd Kenrick admitted that the design team has been concerned about the monk's damage output for a while. And again, because they're so ability score dependent, when they get an ASI, they can't spend it on feats like barbarians and fighters to help shore up their damage output. The last major point is that monks have a finite resource pool. Whereas a rogue can dash or disengage for free, a monk has a limited number of key points or discipline points, whatever we're going to call them, that it has to spend to do the same thing. Stunning Strike, which is regarded by most as its signature ability, is also tied to this. And even some of its like cool thematic features like Deflect Missiles or Flurry of Blows also cost a key point. And these key point costly features are necessary for the monk to at least even keep pace with its other melee martial peers. And even so, the monk usually still falls behind. And even Stunning Strike, after you use the key point, requires the target to fail a constitution save. And in 5th edition's base design, a lot of monsters have a high constitution saving throw bonus, meaning that the signature feature is unlikely to go off often. So to summarize, the monk is a melee martial character with low defenses, low damage output, and requires a cost for the same things that other classes can do for free. So what do we do about it? My hot take is to scrap the class altogether. I don't want to lose the concept of a fantasy martial artist, but designing an entire levels one through 20 class on this specific concept may be too tall an order. 
I think this is a great example where the designers have a very specific vision for the types of things they want the monk to do in the story. And so they design these very niche mechanics that are a little bit too situational and difficult to balance. So we end up getting an underpowered class that's not satisfying to play. Now, as part of this suggestion, I am largely going to be letting go of a lot of the imaginative baggage that's attached to the monk. Rather than trying to think flavor first and design mechanics off of that, we're going to be considering the mechanical gameplay experience first and then letting the flavor kind of find itself after. I've found in all of my years GMing, both professionally and casually, this design approach tends to yield more satisfying results than having a cool idea in your head, but not ever seeing it work out because of the way the dice or mechanics are designed. So first, let's look at some of the monk's iconic features from first through 10th level. I'm picking those levels particularly not only because there's this common perspective that most D&D campaigns end about at 10th level, but another good point is the lower level a feature is, the more likely it just sees play in general. So if you get a feature at say third level, it's really likely you're going to see that feature playing a third level character. But even if you're playing a 15th level character, you still have those third level features. So the lower the level a feature is, the more likely you just see it throughout any kind of game you're going to play. So Monk's iconic features, I find are unarmored defense. They can use dexterity and wisdom to determine their armor class when they're not wearing armor. Personally, I would get rid of the shield restriction. I think, again, this is an example of there's a very specific vision for how the designers see the monks being in play. But again, barbarians can use their unarmored defense with a shield. So I don't think there's a balance concern about it. Another, of course, is the monk's martial arts die and that they have a damage die with their unarmed strikes and can also use their bonus action to make an additional unarmed strike. At second level, you get unarmored movement. They get a movement speed as long as they're not wearing armor. They also get flurry of blows, step of the wind, and patient defense. Each of those cost a key point, but step of the wind in particular, dash or disengage. Third and fourth levels, you get deflect missiles and slow fall. And at fifth is where you get extra attack and stunning strike. The next chassis feature is 7th level with evasion, hmm. and then ninth is unarmored movement. In the 2014 version of the monk, 10th level is purity of body, but I don't really see that as being an iconic part of the monk's kit, even though it's a decent feature. So my hot take, my solution, is instead of the monk being a standalone class, we redesign it to be a rogue subclass. Reason being, no. Reason being is that these two classes, in terms of gameplay experience, actually operate kind of similarly. The rogue at second level is also dashing and disengaging as a bonus action. At seventh level, both of these classes have evasion. They're both dexterity based. And really, the monk's biggest problem is that it's tied to this multiple ability score dependency. However, if you think of it as a dexterity class, well, now the rogue and the monk have a lot in common. So where would I put each feature? At rogue third level, it's already taking care of dash and disengage. So the first thing I do is put martial arts, the key unarmed strikes feature of monk, as one of the first abilities where a monk subclass rogue can use unarmed strikes with dexterity, but they also synergize with sneak attack. This addresses the concern that monks have a low damage output. In addition, you can give them that bonus action unarmed strike to give them just a little something extra. And if they really need to, with the playtest rogue, we also have steady aim so if you really just need to hit the thing and get that sneak attack, the monk can do it. As a martial arts instructor myself, sometimes you just need to root into a stance and hit as hard as you can. The next thing I'd give is unarmored defense. 
Again, I'd take away the shield restriction, but I'd also have unarmored movement be part of the unarmored defense feature. So now you have an interesting choice while building your rogue. Yes, you can wear armor, so you don't have to depend on your wisdom score, but if you want, you can do a niche build where you have a higher movement speed. And this is actually a really big bonus. I mean, Scout Rogue from Xanathar's Guide to Everything gets a plus 10 movement speed as its ninth level feature, and that's all it gets. Of course, this one is more conditional. You can't be wearing armor to get the movement speed, but still, you're able to dash for free and you get that unarmored movement as part of your unarmored defense. The only thing you're giving up here is the scaling unarmored movement that you get from the normal monk progression, which I don't think is so bad because you're able to dash more often than the monk was able to to begin with. Now, the next subclass level Rogue has is at 9th. You don't get Stunning Strike or Extra Attack at the same level. But at 9th level first, we can improve our unarmored movement. We can give it another plus 10 movement speed. We can give the feature where it can run across liquid surfaces and up and down walls. And this is where we'd put in Stunning Strike. The reason is at 5th level, the new Playtest Rogue has a Cunning Strikes feature where when it hits with its sneak attack, it can take away some of the sneak attack dice in order to have another effect. At fifth level, it's things like disarming, tripping, or poisoning. And hey, that'd be kind of a cool monk ability too. I mean, isn't that what Way of Mercy is all about? So instead, our character would be giving up a certain amount of sneak attack dice in order to hit with its stunning strike. And now the stunning strike isn't eating away a finite resource. You get to try it every time you sneak attack. And if you don't want a stunning strike, you just deal more damage. And we're already kind of seeing this kind of design with Swashbuckler. Swashbuckler gives additional uses for cunning strikes as part of its ninth level kit. Overall, we are giving some things up. I haven't found a place for deflect missiles, slow fall, I don't really think we need patient defense, and flurry of blows may not be necessary since its main damage output is through sneak attack. But overall, by making Monk a rogue subclass, we're actually getting similar things at similar levels while also addressing a lot of the design gaps that the original Monk had. Another little thing, the playtest Monk lost martial weapon proficiencies. If you read the feats that were printed in Playtest Packet 2, things like Dual Wielder, Great Weapon Master, Polearm Master, all of those weapon feats require a proficiency with at least one martial weapon. The monk basically isn't allowed to take any of those feats by its base design. The rogue does get access to them though. Now another thing you lose by taking away the monk as a class are its subclasses. To me, those can just become the higher level subclass features. So maybe you have Shadow Step be the 13th level feature. That's a pretty powerful feature to begin with. Or maybe you add in some of the open hand effects as part of the 9th level feature. But now I'm curious to hear what all of you have to say. Are you completely put off by this solution? Do you think it, it fails to capture what it's like to play a monk? Does this sound like a good idea? If so, how would you change it? Do you see a good way of integrating some things like deflect missiles back in? Let us know in the comments down below and have an awesome day, everybody. Bye-bye now.